Hello, Ken Weller here with New Tech Inventors. Today we're going to be talking about three subjects. One, the larger printers that we have here, the ANET A8+, Plus, the ANET ET5, and the Tronic CX5SA, and how they'll be printing multiple parts. Also, we'll look at a problem we had with one of our parts and how we're going to solve it by using PETG filament for additional strength. Also, down at the print farm, we're printing multiple parts in different configurations, um, getting set up for production down there. So let's go ahead and get into it. What we're doing today is determining how many parts and what configurations we can run on these larger format printers at the print farm. Uh, this first printer is the ANET A8 Plus. It's a 300 by 300 build plate. And we have several of these that are getting ready to be set up down at the print farm. On this printer now, we have the three port adapters for the helping hand on here. And as you can see, there are 28 of them that can run on this printer. And at 28, that's going to be a little bit over 70 hours or a three-day print time on this printer. And the next one's the ANET A5 printer. On this one, we're running a configuration of various parts and a total of seven different parts and different sizes. So this is just a mixture, but the uh, total time for this one is 34 hours so it'll be a one and a half day run time on the ANET A5 which also has a 300 by 300 build plate uh, this is the Tronic C X5 SA 330 by 330 build plate we can run 12 of these helping hand base parts on this printer at a time and the runtime is about 72 hours. So this is also a three day runtime on this printer. We're just basically trying to figure out is it going to be economical or helpful to run these larger format printers with these longer run times or print fewer of these parts on something like the ANET ET4 printers that we have at the print farm now running, which would run a smaller portion of them but also in a shorter amount of time but if these printers are reliable and if they don't mess up then running these larger parts for longer period might be the thing we want to do well we're back down here at the print farm and trying to get some of the multiple parts set up and tested out on the printers we've I've worked up different configurations for parts depending on how many hours it's going to take to run and so forth. These are the four that I'm working on right now. They will run from six hours, the other one's 10 hours, 20 minutes, three hours, 10 minutes, 18 hours, and so forth. And we'll be reconfiguring them so that they'll run as close as we can get to those 12 hour run times that we're needing for the print farm here since I'm only going to be coming down here hopefully twice a day once in the morning once in the evening and uh, servicing these uh, printers also I have the um, quantity of filament necessary I did bring my uh, prototype uh, filament counter down here and I'm in the process of taking certain rolls of filament and measuring those out to the appropriate length and I'll be checking those against the actual uh, print jobs and we'll be able to tell by how much filament's left on the spool when we're finished two things how accurate the um, slicer software is in predicting the uh, length of filament that we're going to be using. 
and then on some of these printers over here I'm just running um, some different configurations to see how they'll um, how they'll do so that's what's going on down here right now and I've been doing most of the um, prototyping and test work up at the house I've got a couple new parts that I'm integrating into the uh, the process that I've been working on up there and um, we'll take a look at those today I'm going to talk a little bit about a problem I'm having uh, this is one of the parts if you look at it closely you'll see that this part right here has broken and that was caused by there's another piece that goes in here that pivots and over tightening of this screw to pinch and hold that part um, caused this to break so this is the table mount the portable table mount for the helping hand so obviously this needs to be fixed and fixed well so I'm going to do two things one uh, I'm going to change the filament and I'm going to be printing with this pet G filament and when printing with pet G then my temperatures change quite a bit. I started out test printing on my trusty king room here uh, <clears throat> with this particular PET G filament and uh, I found out that uh, around 130, I'm sorry, 230 degrees centigrade, um, I still wasn't getting a real good quality I went to 235 and it seemed to get a little worse and uh, 240 it kind of stabilized a little bit and at 245 it just uh, started printing perfectly so um, 245 degrees on the king room and I think I had a 70 degree uh, bed temperature and that bed temperature is going to change from printer to printer depending on what the surface is uh, glass uh, metal um, <clears throat> magnetic and so forth so I still have to tweak that a little bit um, but I do want to get all of the bugs out of this and uh, pet G it uh, it has to be set up right. If you're printing at the wrong temperature, it's just going to be a disastrous mess from what I've found. So um, so it does take a, a lot more heat, a lot more temperature. And um, that's what we're going to do there. The other thing we're going to do, in addition, because the PET-G uh, filament um, should give me a stronger part and the layers should adhere better together but another thing uh, on this particular part the infill was at 20 percent and um, since it's a high stress part what I'm going to do is increase the thickness of the inner and outer layer and increase the density of the infill and those things will it will take longer to print it will use more filament but um, I'm going to get this part to the point where I won't have this problem again um, and any other parts that are high stress parts I have these um, other rod ends connectors that um, also have a lot of stress on them so these parts these rod ends are also going to be definitely uh, be printed with PET-G and also uh, have denser 
infill as well as thicker layers. So that's how one of the things that we run across, you have to look at each part. This part here is a no stress part. There's never any stress put on this part. So we don't have to be too concerned about it. And um, pretty much the same thing with several of the parts, but these definitely are going to have to have special attention. So I'm going in here and I'll be going through the different settings and setting those uh, thicker walls and getting my temperatures for the PETG and so forth. And then we'll print a couple of these and we'll actually, uh, we'll break them. We'll find out just what it takes to break them. And uh, I have a feeling it's going to take a tremendous amount of force, more than the helping hand will ever see.